Better stand by to reject the point. Prepare to eject the warp core. Authorization ECH Omega 4-2. Eject the warp core. Computer, eject the warp core. I just did. Eject the core. Eject the core. All right, so. We are back, back, back. We're back, baby. Back, baby! And so is Star Trek Picard, our favorite show. That's right. We are back for the uh, premiere of season three, the final season. Yeah. So they say, uh, we could always make a movie. Oh, boy. Three seasons in a movie. Oh, so, uh, okay. Um, I don't really even know where exactly I want to start with this. Uh, I, I think... Like we're gonna, we'll so, try not to do spoilers. I want to talk. To preface this, yeah, it's it's, it's one o'clock in the morning. Yeah, uh, we we both get up at like five a.m. or earlier usually. So we stayed up. Well, you stayed up. I took a nap, but yeah, um, still kind of tired and delirious to watch this episode. And uh, yeah, it it. Uh, okay, L- look. So there, I historically speaking, if you haven't seen any of our content before, we're not a big fan of the show. Uh, I think that season one is so bad; it's fun and hilarious. Uh, and season two is very boring. Yeah, season two is a slog and hard to get through. Yeah, and, and like there are little gems that you can find here and there. Like Rios is cool. It was really nice to see John Delancey back as Q, even though I didn't like how where it went. But whatever, it's fine. Laris um, was an okay character. Yeah, Laris, I think, was cool. Uh, the development of, uh, like, what goes on with Laris is kind of weird, but whatever, it's fine. Um, but people were telling us, telling the world, that this season was going to be different. We un- and, and it was implied, like, we understand that there are problems with the show, so we're going to give people what they really want. And they did not. Um, I mean, at least for episode one, like... This is not what I wanted to see. No, I, me neither. The I, I do not feel like problems have really been addressed that take this show and actually make it like an actual Star Trek show, like, at all. No, nah, it really doesn't feel like Star Trek to me. Like, what really, what really sold it for not feeling like Star Trek to me was Seven of Nine crying about her fucking like captain and not liking the position that she was in and all of that like just her attitude in that scene right like the way that she she seemed like a pouting teenager right you know? and she was just so angry and i'm so mad and he calls me annika and i don't like it uh so like before we we will give a little bit of spoiler warning even though it doesn't really matter there's not that much that really happens in this episode yeah. it's just the the setup for it um the there are some some very glaring problems that I see right away. First and foremost is it looks like crap. It's so dark you cannot see what's going on. It, like even on the 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 ship on the bridge of a ship of a Starfleet ship, everyone is backlit. You can't see anything. In the future, apparently, in the thirty years since you know, like they they were captaining starships and stuff. They decided to turn the the ambient light down to like fifteen percent. Now, the one nice thing is that there's no lens flares. Uh, yeah, well, yet, but, the, yet, but at least with the lens flares, you could see what was happening for the most part. Right. This it was is, it was a creative decision because they don't want anyone to see what's going on at all. This is just dark trash, and it's really unfortunate. And I mean, and I really mean that. Everything is dark. Every scene in this entire episode was so dark that it's hard to tell anything that's going on. Yeah. And it wasn't like some scenes are better or like the scenes that should be well lit. It was everything is fucking dark. I even noticed it like there was a scene where there's a character on a ship 
They're going to a planet. They're trying to communicate with the planet. It's daytime on the planet, and you can, you can see what's happening on the planet, but every time there's a shot inside the ship, it's super dark, and it makes no sense. It's absolutely bizarre. Um, let's just get into spoilers. Um, so we'll we'll break down kind of kind of what happens. Uh, so the episode opens uh, on uh, Chateau Picard, and of course it's nighttime because you know if it was daytime we could actually see shit. I thought it opened with uh, Crusher. Oh, that's right. It did open with Crusher. So you get a little bit of a, a prologue of like she's being hunted by you know. Aliens. People with masks on, and yeah. she's got some kind of fucking Jarvis system on her starship that and does a everything. Pump action lightsaber for some, or lightsaber light, L- laser, laser, laser rifle. Yeah. yeah, pump action laser rifle, which is strange. Um, yeah, and she repels them, but she's in trouble. She sends a coded uh, distress call to Picard to Picard's communicator from the Enterprise D. Of yeah, all things. Yeah. Which is really strange, but you know they they, they do kind of put a little bit of an explanation on it that oh it was the security thing that we did when you got assimilated by the Borg or whatever that was clever whatever, so then we Chateau Picard he gets the message he goes and finds Riker in a weird bar and then they they get on board the Titan A or it's not even the Titan A it's the Titan refit which is weird because the like the Titan from um lower decks that was supposed to be like the ship that that Riker doesn't look anything like this Titan. Yeah. And yet he made mention of how like Shaw took the chair from from Riker. So it's supposed to be the same ship. Or something. It's so yeah. fucking weird, man. It's very strange. Um then we they, are... they do a mutiny. Well we're introduced to the captain whose name is Shaw and he's the the writers want you to not like this person. So, like, Riker and Picard, come on, they're lying to him to try and get him to go where they want him to go. Without Starfleet knowing. Right. And Picard is is retired, and Riker doesn't even have a commission right now. Uh, And he's just like, no. No, I'm not going to do that. Sorry, guys. Yeah. And uh, he's and he's right. Yeah, enjoy your time on the ship, though. But uh, we're not we're not changing course to go where you guys want to go. Right. And then he goes to bed, and uh, his first officer does a mutiny against him. Yeah. And so they they go out there and they uh, find find the ship, and uh, Beverly is in cryogenic stasis, and they have a tense scene with an unknown man. An unknown young man who appears to be like maybe around 20 years oldish or yeah. so. Yeah. And he's got a British accent, which is kind of silly. That's very it's, strange. And uh, Raised by his mom who doesn't have a British accent. Right. And, and, uh, and, and as, soon as, uh, as soon as Picard and Riker uh, confront him, he's, he's like, who is this person? And, and he goes, her son. Right. And then the episode ends. Yeah. Or wait, no, he uh, goes he goes, We're being hunted and then the like look at who's hunting us. And then it just shows you some fucking ship. alien ship. Yeah, it doesn't explain what uh, it is. Or... There are other subplots, we'll get into them in a second, but it's 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 obvious to me, although maybe it's a red herring, you never know, maybe whatever. But more than likely, uh, because Beverly stopped hanging out with Picard twenty years ago and now here's this twenty year old kid that it's probably Picard's kid. Which would be the worst thing that this show could possibly do. Hey, hey it could be a spin off, the adventures of young Jack Crusher, the son of Jean Luc Picard. I already hate this show. Yeah, yeah, I know. I mean I hated it before, but like I already hate this season now. The only other subplot we get is Raffi, and yeah. Raffi's trying to like track down. Man, uh, you stolen called that weapons. shit too, because like we were watching the scene, and she's like talking to a drug dealer, trying to get information out of him, and you're like, she's still in Starfleet. Yeah, and she's I'm like, she's undercover. I'm like, I don't know. It just seems like uh, how somebody who doesn't understand drug addiction would write drug addiction, but yeah, you were but, right. She's yeah, a, she's a she's a secret spy, and uh, 
trying to find out who stole these these portal weapons that look like something out of and you called it oh like, yeah yeah it looked like, like doctor strange i didn't i see i i didn't put that together before when she talked about quantum tunneling tech yeah okay yeah, that's so like, but, it's somebody, stupid. it looks it looks directly like ripped out of doctor strange portal holes right somebody an unknown person is is stealing quantum tunneling tech and when she goes to she figures out where the target's going to be she flies over there uh, a portal opens, it sucks in like a Starfleet recruitment office and then drops it onto the city. Yeah, it's like it opens the portal like right it's, above it's where it is. It's kind of a cool something. effect and everything, but it, it, it's just kind of... You know what it reminded me of? What? In the scene in uh, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness no. where Wong opens up the portal and Abomination punches himself. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's what I was thinking when they did that. Ah, that's pretty funny, yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, and uh, I guess she has like a handler, and and you think that the handler who she doesn't know their voice or their face, only talk through text. You think it's Worf? I'm pretty sure it's Worf because he says, "You are a warrior. This is a war." Sounds like a Worf thing. Yeah. yeah. So I think that Worf is going to do be involved in Starfleet intelligence somehow. Yeah. And uh, that's how he's going to get pulled into this and have a connection to Rafi. And yeah, this is just this is a show written for babies. <laughs> I I don't I really don't know where it's gonna go, but it looks like crap. Um, oh, and here's the other thing that really bothers me about it, though. Okay, so at least Seven of Nine is no longer a drunk, but she hates her life and hates her job. Raffi is no longer a drug addict, but she hates her life and she hates her job. Now Riker is happy to run off with Picard because his marriage and his family life is falling apart. That's the thing about this show. Everything sucks. Everything sucks. Everyone is having a terrible time. Everybody has just the worst lives, and it's not inspiring. And nobody wants to trust Starfleet because they can't, because otherwise, you know, it it would change the whole way the show works. Uh, So it's nothing but, like paranoia and suspicion and suffering like all the good hallmarks of a star trek show right everything that you remember from your youth yeah yeah that's what i loved Uh, about star trek was all the suffering and all the the darkness and the 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 sense of uh anxiety that it invokes Mm -hmm. yeah yeah no this was trash and uh i want to thank every review that i read that said it was going to be fantastic uh and that it was going to be the best season ever and that you know it's just a fucking uh, it's just a love letter to people who love star trek sure those people definitely didn't get a, a check cut yeah uh last thing i wanted to totally ask, not getting paid by paramount uh who is brent spiner playing in this season he's playing lore if i uh really yeah if if what i read is correct and what all the promotional material says oh yeah he's 74 years old playing an ageless android that he last played like what fucking 35 years ago oh yep this is gonna be a great season y'all well at least this is the last time that we have to do a season or an episode one review of star trek picard think about that that's true i don't know I, I don't know how many of these we'll do. We'll probably, like, maybe we'll watch a few episodes before we come back and maybe, talk about maybe them. Maybe, like, middle of the season we'll do one, <laughs> and then we'll do, like, a an end of the season, you know. How many episodes thing. are there going to be? I didn't look. There's usually ten. Oh, it's I gonna, think it is ten, actually. It's going to be a really, really long ride. Okay. Maybe eight. I don't know. All um, right. Either way, it's going to be too many. <laughs> It's already too many. <laughs> no, they like if it was one more episode, it'd still be too many. But you know, yeah. Okay. Well, so, that's, yeah. that's that's our first look. Yeah, that's our that's our first impressions of uh, Star Trek Picard season three. It sucks. Still, still sucks. Hasn't gotten better. Good night. Take care. <laughs>